Hello, welcome to this video on how to photograph your tote bags and in a way that will make them sell. Um, I actually have a close family member that creates tote bags on a regular basis. She actually creates more than she could ever sell, so I took the opportunity to help her out and set about learning how to take photos that also increase the chances of them selling. I actually learned quite a bit, so to give you the answer straight up, if you want to sell on e-commerce, the primary image needs to be on a plain white background. The supporting images need to depict the angles, textures, dimensions, uses, and reflect the viewer's interests. So to go into this a bit more, I'll firstly cover the steps involved with physically taking the photo, then delve into the details that will both help you stand out from the competition, as well as help uh, people notice your work and click on your stuff over the competition as well. So the most time consuming part of product photography I found is the planning and setting everything up. When we're taking pictures of the tote bags, we need to keep in mind, if we're looking to sell them, that people are only going to buy them if they both like what they see and if they feel they are getting good value for money. It is almost as simple as that, but putting all of this into action and getting results comes down to experimentation. I've written a bit more about that elsewhere, but um, for the purposes of this video, I'll go into the actual step-by-step -step of having to set up firstly the lighting, which I have another article on removing shadows, but a dull image is more boring than a nice bright image, as we all know, but getting this done is another matter. There's a lot of lighting equipment you can buy, but nothing really beats natural sunlight in my opinion. This isn't available 24-7, so for a bit of a backup plan, um, you know, you want to have those soft box lights on this on the edges. But what I love doing is taking the pictures in the garden. Um, I have some pictures here popping up to show you what I mean by that. It gives them a nice natural background as well for the secondary image uh, and the supporting images. But as I say, the first primary image wants to be in a white background to focus the eye in on the actual piece itself. So outside or using the um, softbox lights really help both at a high angle putting down at 45 degrees to give you that even light distribution okay <clears throat> so for the background as above the garden reflected my target demographics interests because a lot of them actually like gardening so obviously that's just sort of playing into their interests and associating with the bag but I, I found getting a nice cotton board to um, a white cotton board to lay the bag on flat lay really worked well as well with some wooden typography on it which uh, I'll show another picture here but um, as I say when you do that you want to use props that also reflect their interests so for example a nice fruit bowl because a lot of uh, these customers like to go to farmers markets so more into props uh, when I researched my audience likes, they liked flowers, so I used flowers in my props as well for different bags and just sort of tested to see which one's got the most response. <clears throat> I found a mannequin to be the best option as I don't always have a person to pose at my disposal as well when I need it. Um, so that's another idea to get a mannequin. A camera stand is the best case scenario and I recommend it, but I take most of mine on the mobile and find it quicker to take them by hand. If you just take 10 pictures of each one from each angle, pick the best and delete the rest, then you'll have you know more of a selection to choose from. So just take as many as possible to select the best ones. Now there's whole tutorials online about specific uh, about specific settings on the camera but for me the auto settings work fine on my ca on my phone camera if you're looking to focus your time solely on photography then go ahead to optimize your results by getting a really good camera but if you're looking to get engagement in the cells the auto settings do just fine on you know, most modern phones so taking the shot as i mentioned take about 10 shots of every angle and from different distances and choose the best ones it's going to save you time editing later as well because you're going to have the best images up front at your disposal. You want to show people what the bag looks like from different angles so they it feels so like you can replicate the feeling of touch, especially these side on angles that show the textures. It's a sort of a place as people need to touch, especially with um, materials. So that's just a nice idea to use as well. Um, when it comes to editing, there's three main things to focus on. The first being cropping. You usually want to do a one-to-one -one ratio to get it nice and square. 
uh, with brightness, you want to play with increasing the brightness a little bit and most of the time to have it pop off the page nicely. And also contrast and, and sharpness, this really crispens up, but just don't go over the top because that can make it look a bit weird. Uh, so to stand up from the competition, there's some additional points when it comes to marketing photography that I've, all, that I've actually covered a bit already. But here's a bit more in-depth info on that. So reflect the viewer's interests. As I've already uh, said, my target market liked gardening, fresh produce, amongst other things. So I, I associated their interests with the bag to make the photog photography more compelling for them. But how do you go about finding the interests? You'll likely have an idea if you're in the same social group as your customer. But to make sure, have a look at the people who are commenting on your social pages as well as your own and see what these people are like, what, what, have, what is in their profile image. You know, are they out in the garden? Are they holding flowers? Just sort of get an idea of who your customer base are. Then you want to use a compelling headline. It should be descriptive of the image to help search engines know what it is, as well as including keywords in there to get your uh, stuff seen on the search engines. The main thing is to make the headline unique and compelling to your audience so, so that it also reflects their interest in that respect. And you also want to connect with the viewer and sell the tote bag. Again, this comes to talking to a few <coughs> viewers in a way that uses their lingo and speaks back to how the bag can be used in association with their interests. Also the specific measurements and fabrics used go without saying and description with this call to action i.e. Uh, buy now, buy one get one free is going to really help. So in conclusion uh, incorporating lighting to stand out props and backgrounds that reflect your audience's interests, angles and close-ups to give perspective and a camera modern enough to use the auto settings for ease and to save time are the core elements here really. Um, I've written more about this over at my blog in more clear, more step-by-step. -step. Um, I've put the link in the description for the specifics uh, and I hope this helps today. Cheers then, bye.